We're also being asked an interesting question. Can't you give some of the players monarch points based on their skills? It's been a while since I did this. I think I did it either way at the start of this or uh, or for a previous campaign. I'll just grab a quick drink. Not at all to buy some time whilst I think about how our players are doing. Hmm. Kind of kind of interesting, that one. Okay, so how about we look at France there? It's a hard one to call because Daniel as a player is doing really well, yet in each of his stats I would rate him quite lowly. Administratively, okay. I'd give him perhaps a 4, maybe even a 5. He knows how to play the game very well. He is part of the 4-digit hour club. And at that point, yeah, yeah you know a lot. He knows how to build up a nation, how to defend it well, and just how to play overall. So yeah, I think I'd comfortably give him a 5. Diplomatically, Daniel is weak. Daniel is very weak. He doesn't understand the concept of give and take in a relationship, so I would maybe not so harshly give him a 0, but I'd probably just give him a, uh, a 1 for diplomacy, because he's not good at understanding what people want out of a war and how to give and take. Militarily, he fights very well. I'd give him another 4 there, so uh, why don't we say a 5 one, four? for our Daniel over in France. When it comes to our Daniel over in Austria, he's considerably better at, uh, well, all of it, actually. I would give him a stat upgrade in all of that. Um, yeah, he knows the game like the back of his hand, so I would give him a uh, 635. Maybe the 5 is pushing a bit in war, but I'll go for it, 635 for our uh, Starnan over in Austria. He knows how to play really well, and he's pretty great at running it. Diplomatically stronger, but still not a powerhouse. He's unlike Wiz down in Ethiopia, who I don't care about the other stats. He gets that hands down six in uh, diplomacy, and he's probably the only player that deserves that. Wiz knows what other players want and how to get them to do what he wants. He makes very lucrative deals that never sound too much take and not enough give. And he knows that antagonizing your enemies is not perhaps the best thing to do. He tries to keep his fingers in all the pies. It's exhausting work, especially for a man who is a director of Stellaris to come along to play along with us way back in the past, in the 16th century here in Europe Universalis. But uh, his, his skills in the diplomacy table are unmatched. He knows the game really well as well, and at fighting, he's not that great at fighting. I'll, um, lack of credit where lack of credit is due, but I would comfortably give the man a uh, 5 six, 3 He knows how to fight, but he doesn't quite have the skills that pay the bills in multiplayer. That's why he concentrates more on the diplomacy, no doubt. Mark is a hard one to judge here, our uh, player up in the Commonwealth. He knows how to play the game extremely well. I'd give him a happily 5 or 6 there. Uh, I haven't seen enough diplomacy out of him to really base him on that and I think the lack of diplomacy that I've seen kind of speaks for itself so why don't we go with a 525 uh, hmm, five. why not rusty veteran is still scraping off too much rust for me to uh, want to give him uh, stats on that and Johan you uh, you'd get the question mark question mark question mark because I think it depends on how he wants to play that day Jake, what do you rate yourself, though? Um, well, I mean, I don't think that highly of myself at this game. I think uh, maybe 6-6-6. Six, six, six. I'm, I'm kidding there. Uh, I've been out of the uh, multiplayer games and been the observer for a while, but when I was playing, oh boy, I knew how to fight. I knew how to run a country. But the problem was, I, the problem, the problem was, I fought against Wiz and lost because his diplomacy skill far outranks mine. Grugi is just something else, though. I think, uh, I think we'll leave it on that for the stats at the moment. Okay, so I blinked, and the Timurids have decided uh, to hell with my problems with corruption, lack of money, army made of twiglets. We're fighting Ming. Okay, so Ming outranks you on militarily uh, massively. You are going to die in a battle like this, for example. And I can just put that down there. Timurids are not going to win this. Don't don't make me eat my words, game. I I wouldn't like that. Interesting power play by the Timmers here to go charging into the Ming. 
<laughs> so we're getting confirmation from cats that perhaps I jumped the gun on that assumption because the Ming attacked them. This is the Ming conquest of Bech. The Ming conquest on the Timurids. The Timurids made mm, no friends. Well, no friends worth having in this war. Hejaz and Trebizond. To be fair, they barely had the time to get that together. Uh, okay. Wow. The the dragon rises. Ming is a threat to the world. I can't believe one of our players said, Give me Ming. Give me Ming. Not happening. So, a lot of people have been speculating on how the changes to institutions will affect, well, the entire world. But, of course, there's a focus on the rest of the world and Ming in particular, it's worth saying that during this multiplayer campaign we've been playing on loads of different versions because we play with the code as we continue to work on it. We're not afraid of showing off our game while it's still a work in progress, we enjoy showing it off, and apparently you guys enjoy watching it. If you didn't, then I'm sure you would tell us otherwise. A uh, point that I'm getting at is that whilst things have been changing out throughout the development build and things uh, will have changed with regards to institutions, Ming starts off with no tech penalty. There's the bottom line. If you play 1444 and you start as Ming, you're going to open up your tech screen. Why don't we jump over to Ming right now so we can emulate that point. And you're going to go institution tech penalty 0% because they start with feudalism. Renaissance will unlock over in Italy and it'll take its time to spread here. Colonialism, no guarantee where it's going to go. It's most likely to happen in Portugal, Spain, maybe England, France. I guess if you're a super proactive Ming, you could even uh, get that going on yourself. But the very idea of starting with no tech penalty means that Ming can uh, flex their muscles and they're going to be far stronger probably than you've, uh, you've seen them before if you're much of a Ming player. It does mean that as time goes on, things get harsher, so Ming... In the release at the moment, if you're playing 117, would start with, I think it's 60% tech penalty. I'm going to pretend that I remember how this works. They're currently sitting on 92 because it takes a while for those institutions to spread. They have feudalism, renaissance, but colonialism is still working its way over there. Is it not? Colonialism, colonialism. Easier to check it right here. Yeah, it's worming its way through their country. So if they were to uh, focus on spreading that within their country and get that embraced they'd be back down to just a 42 penalty rather than what they have at the moment. So, unfortunate time for Timurids. We'll see if they manage to hold out against Ming, but when Ming can boast such an army. Such an army. Even attacking into the mountains with dice rolls that are far from perfect. Timurids are only just squeaking through, but I think the line is breaking and Timurids are being told, go home, all belongs to China. And <laughs> what timing we're actually getting. Uh... We've got the song name playing. I'm hearing one of Kairi's uh, soundtracks, which is very fitting for this now. The Timurids are actually getting quite a few loan offers coming in, and this uh, this is one of the changes that has gone on. There's been a whole load going on for the AI here. Alright, Timurids have put their hands up saying, I surrender. They have unconditionally surrendered to the Ming. And the Ming have made their peace. Very generous of them, only taking 11 developments, so it's actually a good stake for the Timurids here to do that. Uh, if I had to guess, they, uh, they were forced to give up money as well. Seems the Ming didn't want to take over too much. Yeah, he's a diplomatic character. He's not taking out loads. All right, good move by the Timurids to throw their hands up there. Better than uh, starving yourself. Anyone know if the Copto, Copto wealth became a thing? I believe the Commonwealth is staying true to Catholicism, Coptic. Uh, I think even France tried to dip themselves into the Coptic faith, but it would have to spread so much throughout their country. They're not really in a position to be doing that right now unless they really sell out. They haven't gone Protestant though, which surprises me. Protestant would be a very strong move for them. The Commonwealth have absorbed even more into their country. The Nizhny Novgorod, who did have quite a bit of development on their hands, 
is now within them. So yeah, that province is always a nice one to grab or punch out of Muscovy at 15 development right there. He lost four nations in India though. Right, I wasn't paying attention to that. He was forced to gob out Kors et al. What was it? Uh, Multan is now on the map. Don't know if Kashmir was brought into existence. You can check at the age of their ruler. Uh, inaugurated 83. So I guess not. Well, I guess Malwa can be rubbing their hands together, but uh, only insofar as Timurids as food. They have not allied with Malwa. And the Ottomans, well, they're a scary customer because they could probably just stroll into Timmy and take what's theirs. All that's thine shall be mine. Worth plugging the dev diary that came out today. We shared uh, some of the new national ideas, new, uh, if you're an owner of El Dorado, the female advisor packs for South America. Uh, put up a few samples of those. And the achievements, 20 new achievements for Rights of Man. Because uh, a long time ago I used to have 100% achievements in this game. And then Wiz said, this is not happening. And he added like 150 new achievements. And uh, exiled to my own fate there, I've gone and added 20 more. I think these are some pretty fun ones. They don't include like conquer Germany as this nation or go and conquer the whole world. And uh, they tinker around with some of the new mechanics. Check them out. It's over on the new uh, on the new dev diary just posted today. Are there any benefits of staying Catholic as a Commonwealth when most others have gone Protestant or Coptic? I guess they're going to have an easier time controlling the papacy. I say that, but it's just the uh, the Pope is in charge at the moment. Doesn't look like the Copto oh, got me saying that now. Doesn't look like Commonwealth have been investing in this, and that bastard over in France decided that uh, they should call a crusade against Ryukyu. I can't believe that. I mean, uh, they're still there. They're doing really well, and boy, their development is through the roof. Oh, right, we timed that well on France. France is now at war with Austria. Austria is going to war. They're at war with Great Britain and France. That appears to be everyone that's joining in. France themselves at war with Burgundy, Austria, Hungary, Bohemia. That's Austria and their friends. How is this going to be? So it is the Austrian purge of French heresy, France, Catalonia, Great Britain, and their dependencies, Vigianagar as well. If anything, this opens up opportunity for Malwa and Passai if they want to jump on France, since they've left themselves a little uh, unguarded there. So, chopping ourselves over to Austria, who are still sitting on a marriage offer from Great Britain, who want to get their Lancasters. Here, there, and everywhere. Screw the treaty, he says. Out the window with it. I didn't say nothing, says Max. Nope, Frederick von Habsburg. To be fair, it was Maximilian von Habsburg that signed that treaty. Frederick is not held to any such accountability. When we look over, we have Henry sitting in France. So again, not another person that signed on that treaty. Henry is not bound by what his uh, father put down. Was it his father? Uh, I can't check that at the moment. We've got war going on. Uh, but I think Henry Lancaster remembers it well. And our Padishah here also. Wow, we've had uh, quite, the new, quite a bunch of new folks coming in at this time. The greedy Padishah. So interesting to see this. I want to jump in as an observer, see what all players can see. Our Burgundian players joined in with Tech 16. That's nothing to be sniffed at. Austria also enjoying Tech 16. The British have a terrible habit of not really getting involved in these wars. They like to sit back and do their 2%. However, it looks like they're bringing over quite a few numbers. Hopefully some natives don't go beating up on them. But Austria is a powerful man. He has managed to retain his crown. Only barely, but he has still retained it. And he's going to be putting that to work. France does not have a fully mobilized army here. They're probably still kicking around abroad with that. They aren't tied up in any other wars, but they also have a truce with Ethiopia and Brittany right now. Why Ethiopia? Did they annul on that uh, alliance on the call to arms? I couldn't really tell you. Let's drop Great Britain to the mix and cut France a little, comes in from Layman in the chat. Also being told that uh, Ethiopia is at war. Ethiopia is at war with Mutapa, but that's hardly going to be uh, a strain on the Wizington. 
I spy some Copticism spreading throughout Morocco, so well and truly our Imperator wants to do everything he can to spread that lava. I don't know what France is doing here. They're inviting themselves into grasslands. They are fighting into hills. Austria is not a fool. He has people backing him up, even though he's going to lose initially on this. He gets his front row fleshed out, and the French are told where to go, but they were locked in already. This could be really bad for uh, the French army. They have lost Nice. They better hold on to Dauphiné. They're marching the way back as quick as they can. Okay, they're kind of holding on to that, but he's going to need to plough his way through Lyonne. If we look at this from the eyes of Austria, and we check the tech here, it might be easier to check it in the buildings map mode. The castles are outdated, and that means they're going to fall a lot faster. Speaking of falling fast, the British come along and they do what the British do best. Not very much. The British are best at using uh, camouflage tactics when it comes to these wars. Now we've got some, uh, got some people watching us in the booth today, so uh, all the paradox coming down to see this war. Remember, Austria lost quite a bit here, and if I'm not mistaken, they hadn't stated it all. They'd only fully cored... Uh, Yes, this province. I'm not even going to try. That province in Provence. They're back for blood, and it seems that they want to uh, want to expend their influence here. We don't know what the Ottomans are getting up to. Might be worth keeping an eye on their troops. They have not mobilized. They're just around the center there. So could it be that they... Uh, well, it's Murad, not Mehmed. Murad has no uh, memory nor knowledge of this so-called treaty that people are going on about. Wasn't? Wasn't Leon a a uh, level 2 fort when I checked it about 5 seconds ago, or am I well and truly going blind? Finished construction of a bastion very recently. Okay, so a well-timed construction for you. That does mean harder times for our besiegers, since they will be treated as the attackers in any engagement when the French try to help them out here. But they bring the numbers, but Britain bring fair numbers themselves. They're busy working on sieges up in Barwa, Barwa down. Not English, occupied by Great Britain, but at least the French are being told where to go. If the uh, Austrian and friends are thinking wisely, they will go up and try to smash Great Britain during this time, since they are not going to benefit from standing around with so many. No, they're deciding to go south, keep a hold of what they've grabbed because these level 2 forts are going to fall all that much easier as long as plenty of cannons are brought. And this is why when I gave ratings to our players, when it comes down to it, Starnan trounces France in terms of military skill. He's far better at conducting warfare, spreads his units out, he knows when to attack, when to defend, and he keeps his eye on everything quite a lot better. I also want to point out that if we were playing as Austria or as France over here, we now have the dots on the minimap, so you can see at a glance where people are if they're invading you across the world. So if they were doing a little stealth attack, I don't know, let's say uh, a certain Indian player decided that Ceylon is a threat for Indians in India, or Pasai decided French Indonesia decided uh, deserves to be theirs, France would be able to see their red dots appearing here. Or if... Uh, or if their Austrian enemies decided to go and attack him that way anyway. So what he does, he keeps his frontline troops there besieging, but not so many that they don't all suffer attrition. They're spread out somewhat so that these Austrians holding back. So the French know they can't attack into that because then the rest of the Austrians will come in and utterly crush them. Austria is potentially being bankrolled, although I couldn't tell you by who. Mr. Nibbles does seem to be awfully low on cash there. And if we check the relationship between Austria and Venice there, Trying to see if there's any kind of gift giving. Not seeing it though. I would have thought that uh, Austria would be bankrolled here by somebody, but it's not happening. Did Commonwealth just join in is a question we're being asked. I see Commonwealth there on the French side. So Austria, truly, if the Commonwealth wasn't there for enough to begin with, the Commonwealth have decided, no, now you see the true might of the Poles. You see that? They're number one in every category. The Commonwealth has the best ruler in the world. Number one in administrative, number one in diplomacy, number one in military. They're coming and they are taking the land that they claimed they would take so long ago. And apparently it was Austria doing the backstabbing in not forking it over when agreements were reached. Don't know what Austria is going to do in all this. Since Commonwealth joined in this war and didn't declare their own one, it was a great move for them. Since if they had declared their own one, France could peace out, and if it was just Austria versus Commonwealth, 
As long as Austria had their friends, I reckon Austria would be able to slap back the Commonwealth due to superior technology. Yeah, they managed to grab that tech 16, which gives those artillery considerably better bonuses. That artillery fire plus one makes them almost twice as strong. So, not the first and probably not the last time that Austria goes to war, but finds themselves at war with several powers. If we were, for example, the Ottomans, though. No, I was going to uh, check and see if... Uh, if intervening was an option there. I'm trying to find a great power who is not at war here. Sweden, of course, not a great power. All right, perhaps uh, Spain. Spain, there we go. Spain could intervene in this war because once again, it was one great power versus three. It was four before. So yeah, Spain could uh, jump in on the show superiority war if they decided that France should be equalized out. But I think the Emperor has things under control. It seems that he built up and he attacked at a good moment here. Also being told that Grugi is at war. Yeah, but Grugi is doing the uh, the grand conquest of Tabaristan because Timurids clearly have their hands full dealing with the, the grand dragon. So Burgundy is going to be enjoying a bit of war exhaustion for the occupation of Barwa, but the capital is still in one piece and Paris is besieged. Krugi saying, Jake, you have forgotten the Eastern Front. It's more like the Eastern Affront. That is uh, Peshaw. Not the Parashah, just the Peshaw. So Austria tapped out on manpower already. They have gone for true Blitzkrieg here, but if they manage to take Paris and kick the British off of the mainland, they might actually want to spend some time going up there uh, towards Burgundy and relieving. Of course, the Commonwealth. I thought the Commonwealth might just be occupying land that they want and taking their peace, but no, they are jumping in on this and they are going for it. We also have uh, incoming transmission from Bjorn. He says he can see Luba. It's beautiful. He'll be going down here trying to reclaim those Luban provinces, including the one that he developed up to the hilt. And he is in Rwanda. He's going to take it over so that he can jump, sail across the lake. Tanga and then take over Luba in all its rightfulness. All right, Austria engaging here and there. I don't know whether the French keep involving themselves in these battles because it's just not going their way. Even when the British are trying to attack the Burgundians, the Burgundians just have so much more they can offer. The Hungarians do not. The Hungarians are a joke on the battlefield. The morale though, when they take the front line is... Uh, well, I mean, we can jump over into their country and have a look here. Are they just lacking ideas or what? They already have defensive ideas, and yet their land morale is pretty poor down at 3.7 compared to the 6.0 of Austria. 6.3 of a land nation. Only 4.5 offered by the British, but where the British lack in morale, they make up for in... So, war is going pretty good in the West. I don't know if Austria is going to look to force France out of this with stab-hitting peace offers, but... The Commonwealth are on a roll here. They saw their opportunity and they've taken it. Austria has been making... And these are real people playing this. Real people who work profession... They work together in an office. And they have their rhetorics between each other. Austria has been making some very aggressive rhetoric towards Commonwealth. So Commonwealth was not about to sit back and watch as his enemy grows... They are here to relieve. Maybe they... I don't really think they're there to save France. But they are there to make sure Austria knows that uh, if you make bad on a deal, you're going to get crushed for it. And I have a lot of respect for the Commonwealth and what they're doing. This makes the second player that they are just going and punching right in the face. And this is uh, Europa Universalis, not Europa Hugbox of Versalis. So good on them for shaking... Uh, Shaking things up a bit. Those Burgundians are extremely confident in themselves, running right into the woods to go and fight a numerically superior British army. But if I look at it, this British army is severely lacking in cannons. And by severely lacking, I mean, where are your cannons, Britain? I guess they're over here, all ten of them. But, yeah, well done, Burgundy. They saw their opportunity and took it. Burgundy, I didn't really give them a rundown of stats. They got pretty badly mauled in this game because of greed. They saw a certain 30 development province and thought, I'd like that as a non-co-belligerent in the HRE. Oh, this could be it for Britain if they get wiped out in Calais. Where are you gonna go? 
I thought they had a fort or two here. They do. It's a little outdated, but the British are running out of places to, well, run to. Then again, though, Austria is on a timer here. They are allowing their good mountainous forts to be seen. They're good mountainous forts. Yeah, yeah, they do have two of them. That doesn't look so hot for them. The Commonwealth are really going to hope to get something out of this. But the trouble is, if France wipes out everything over here, all the French... Sorry, if Austria wipe out all the French and all the British over here, they could turn around and give the Commonwealth a run for their money. The Commonwealth is definitely going to want to secure these mountainous forts on the double. Looks like they have brought along a healthy amount of artillery onto an outdated fort, so straight away it's only a minus seven to the siege rolls. Betty wishes he had that four siege general that uh, France was boasting at one point. I believe it was France. France now enjoying some Navarran separatists. Would love to see Navarra get involved in all of this. When is Europa Hugbox for Salus going to be released? Can we get early access? Uh, we'll see if we can uh, we can market that one. People are asking about Commonwealth ideas. Certainly Commonwealth have gone down defensive, economic, and quantity. Three extremely good ideas. Honestly, I doubt I would have uh, differed from that myself. Economic is very good, and I'd say even stronger in multiplayer when you can't really just grow and grow endlessly. Other players will try to stop you. So it will help you build up what you already have. It's a good way to look less threatening. Doesn't work for Austria, though. Well, that said, they're not out of this war just yet. If we look at this from an Austrian point of view, they are winning this war really hard, and uh, France is losing bombastically hard. However, the Commonwealth have plenty of war score of their own, and another mountainous fort, almost their last mountainous fort, now uh, they've got two more around here, is going to fall, and if Austria thinks they can take this back, they are sorely mistaken. The only question is, will France sell out the Commonwealth? We don't know whether or not yet. Also, Hungary's just sitting there doing absolutely nothing with Moldavia, just chilling as they do. Very generous of the Austrians to go and fight those Navaris. I can't really get behind that kind of action. And the British are just sitting around at the top. Loads of infantry. Not a cannon to their name. They're still beaten back pretty harshly, and I think this is going to be it. Pop. And we've got more popping. No, shame. So, world on fire. Not looking so hot for Salty Daniel over in France, but for Austrian Emperor Daniel, and he's still the Emperor, Starnan, despite the religious peace. Carl II is enjoying his Emperorship. How's it going to go? I want to get a quick rundown of the other players. Uh, Gnivum, whose name I always uh, fail at, is of course involved in the war. Johan also involved. Malwa doing the uh, unthinkable and going for poor Utsang. Going to take Changtang, the most debatably uh, populated province in all of the game. Want to take a moment to plug Sealing Lake. It used to be called uh, Death Mountain, since uh, we can actually have water levels that vary now instead of just being on the ground, which did, used to look very strange. And Starnan and Daniel, of course, involved in this war. They're gunning for it. They think that they can do well to chase out the Burgundians of Baron. They'll probably crush them. Probably crush them. It's not really worth reinforcing with the way that's going. And wipe. So the French have a 4 5 3 general. Three stars, that's extremely good. And now the Austrians are cornered. They have a fairly healthy bunch to the south. Mecklenburg, your faithful ally, is requesting you come to their aid in the Swedish conquest of Wismar. They're part of the Empire. So Sweden never ally Sweden. Don't think that Austria is in a position to be jumping on that, but the Commonwealth are very nearly getting full occupation of Austria. Austria, who is not in debt, they're not really making much money anymore since a lot of their land is being lost. If we look over to Venice, I don't think they are bankrolling anything at the moment. And Portugal, a little low on the money, but I can't really tell uh, if the gifts are being sent. 
I want to just check just for uh, modifiers here to see if there's a gift sent bonus, but I can't see who's bankrolling Austria, if anybody. I can see who's rolling Austria, though. Actually, this is going the other way around since the uh, Commonwealth are the one enjoying the terrain penalty here. They would do well to run away from this battle. I know it's tempting to hold on to a siege like that, but it's not going your way, and away they go. They have plenty of forts that they can uh, be defender in around here. It's funny because the Austrians tried to erect a bastion here, but it was too little and it was far too late. I wonder if Austria is at the point of brokering peace with the Commonwealth, because if they did, Austria would have it in the bag when fighting France. It's hard to say, and Austria is not getting anyone to join in on their side, or at least anybody all that uh, relevant. Burgundy did help. Their armies are certainly competent on the battlefield, but it's just not enough. We're being asked if Gerugi is sponsoring this in any way, so their great power influencing Saxony, probably wanting to get themselves on that throne. It's no com no coincidence since Saxony is an elector here and the Ottomans are just behind Gelra, so they'll probably be looking to orchestrate the annexation of Gelra. Is it Gelra? 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 I have no idea. I am not one of these people. I'm not Dutch. I'm much. Right. Oh yes, but there was a question of bankrolling going on. I doubt they'd be bankrolling the uh, phony emperor. If we check it from their point of view, they are not uh, not helping out France either. In fact, they are rivals. They could still intervene in the war on either side, though. Something quite respectable at the Commonwealth is that they're not going around making enemies. The enemies that they make, they swiftly annex. Case in point, Muscovy. Other case in point, Austria. Goodbye, Austria. So I don't think Austria know really what to do here. They can't attack into these since they have allowed Commonwealth to stroll in and take the mountainous fort. If they want to take that back, hard pressed for them. And the Commonwealth, knowing what they're doing, are actually recruiting inside Austrian land to save time on getting them to the front lines. This is allowing France to retake their lands. I don't think Austria knows what they can do here, and that's true because they really can't do much they don't really i'm doing some fast adding here probably have about a hundred thousand troops there to the enemy's three hundred thousand troops austria well and truly outnumbered three to one in this war they decided to go and attack france but this is why i say that uh Starnani does not excel at the diplomacy he's pretty good with it but mm, not not terribly amazing ottomans are uh, crying because it costs so much for them to adopt the printing press and this is kind of a self-balancing part of the institution spread. We'll take a break from the war to look at that. Printing press is... Okay, it's in a good core of your country, but the Ottoman Empire is big. It's pretty damn big. And uh, although it's in 15% of their development, they have to pay for everywhere that it is not, and they're going to have to save up quite a bit of money for that. I say quite a bit, because they make loads of money. Honestly, just give them a few years, they'll have that covered. But he wants to cry about it. <laughs> the Commonwealth saying, yeah, you think you have problems. I have to pay uh, 3000 for the printing press. But that's the thing. If you have a large country with uh, lots of land where it's not spread to, you will have to pay for it. Whereas uh, smaller nations, or if you have it concentrated in your high development provinces, you'll find it a lot cheaper. If you've got the money, you'll have to invest it there. Big nation problems. <laughs> these guys. These freaking guys. We're being asked about war participation. We better get it before we uh, aren't able to see it. That's blockade percentage, Jake. So 54 from France, 24 from Great Britain, 20 from Commonwealth. Given that they arrived quite late, that's pretty good from the Commonwealth. Nobody else really doing anything. And then over here, Austria pulling all the labor force here. Supplying 82% of the war participation. Over 2,000. Apparently they participated more than France themselves did. With Burgundy, well, I mean, they're there at least. Burgundy getting involved is probably where everything went downhill. But I don't know what Austria is going to be doing now. They're in a bit of a pickle. Austria went to war without any manpower. They brought this defeat upon themselves. Uh, they are tapped out. France still has manpower. Uh, Britain is tapped. In fact, they have an enormous deficit of 35,000 in manpower. The Commonwealth know nothing of manpower problems. They can sit and smoke this attrition all day if they have to. 
right, 3.7 for these guys. Honestly, they could probably sit there with, uh, well, no force, really. Austria can't get past this fort, and if they try to besiege it, then you can relieve it and give them great losses. But I guess Commonwealth is looking to avoid confrontation anyway. They just, they just want. Uh, so, although they're still kind of losing this war from the massive amount of battles, Austria still gets to enjoy 40 war score. So on paper, it's still Austria's victory. 40 from battles and gaining from winning enough battles. Actually, that's going to be enough to give them 65 war score. That's no small amount. But if Burgundy was forced out and their unions get occupied, I'm actually very surprised that the Commonwealth is not spreading out at least a token force around here to take over Hungary. It's also worth uh, Austria knowing that they can recruit units in their subjects. It would only be pestering at this point, but they could still do that. Poor Ottomans threatened war on Timurids, probably looking for a fight. They wanted Golestan, all seven development of it. But the Timurids were not in a position to be defending against the Ottomans, as they certainly couldn't be fighting against the Ming, so they just gave in there and then. So what are... Are European actors going to be doing here and now? Well, they swung around. They went for the provinces that they don't have to be climbing through mountains for. And unfortunately, due to the occupations from the Commonwealth, Austria cannot force peace out the French. Which brings up an interesting conundrum. The Austrians could peace out the Commonwealth and then start stab-hitting France due to just winning the war because all the occupations on them are from Commonwealth. So Austria could still win this war, but they would have to give up uh, whatever the Commonwealth want, if the Commonwealth indeed are even wanting to take it. The Commonwealth could just go, no, I just want you dead, I don't want to take uh, take the peace here. But we'll see how it goes. The Commonwealth have a couple of claims going on, and they probably want, well, they're wanting their culture group lands. They want it all, and they want it now, even though that's increased core creation cost from the Czechs. And it's not like the Commonwealth have uh, points to spare. Unconditional surrender? Well, no, if we were uh, if we were playing as Austria, we'd have a bit of a problem with that, because we can do that only to the war leader. And that's the thing. Austria don't want to lose this war, because they're not losing this war. They are winning this war in terms of war score. And it's just the Commonwealth, the occupation, that's changing that. I don't think the Commonwealth care too much about these rebels as well. They can probably rampage around Austria all they want. Now they might start minding if they take back the forts, but we'll see. This has opened up opportunity for the Commonwealth to make their way south, meet up with the French forces, and crunch. Austria is keen to show Great Britain, though, what they get for joining in here. Great Britain have uh, decided to bring some cannons here, but I think it's too little and far too late for them. Roast beef is told to go home. Of course, they're only going up to Normandy, which is still home for them. A little disappointed that they haven't culturally enriched it over to English, but they have accepted that culture. I want to take a quick look at British culture. Ha, <laughs> that'll be a short look. If we go over here to the government screen, they accept Irish, they accept Norwegian, and they accept Norman. They would probably like to accept Scottish, but it's already a brother culture, so there's little to be gained. Still some to be gained, a little bit of tax, manpower, and sailors, but really not worth the cost there. There could well be other cultures they uh, want to accept in the future, maybe if they expand in the Dutch. But they're just enjoying a healthy friendship with, uh, with Brabant. But since they're both Lancasters, it could be that they want to force union on Brabant to get... Uh, well, a, a almost historical bit of personal union going on down there. Almost. Austrian noble rebels are going around, and did I just hear the sound of cultural enrichment? Because I think I did. I think I heard the Scots being removed. Maybe not the Scots Scots, but the Highlander is getting eradicated from the British Isles. Aberdeenshire, Inverness, Sutherland, and Western Isles are being culturally enriched to English. Johan, Johan, Johan. I'm going to have some words when I get upstairs. Incoming transmissions as well, so... Uh, 
Our our player in uh, Commonwealth has been hit with a huge slap to manpower recovery because their ruler refuses to participate correctly in wars. 50% uh, manpower recovery. That is pretty harsh. I should tone that down a bit. We'll get on that when we get upstairs. Are the British helping liberate Paris here? And it still remains a conundrum for the Austrians. What are they going to do? What can they do? The Commonwealth are sitting on this, but they have to worry about these rebels, the Austrians, that is. Well, no, the Commonwealth, that is, since if they take away all their occupations, then the Commonwealth doesn't have much to say. And it's a pain to have to resiege these, I tell you that. Especially since you would uh, be counted as defender. Well, the Austrians would. Hmm. Harsh times for Burgundy, yet another war that they get involved with and they just get trashed. This is what happens when they switched away from their guns. They said, yeah, I'm going to eradicate Protestantism. And what do they end up doing? They fight against Catholicism on the Protestant side. Sweden wanting to marry the Commonwealth. I actually really wonder what's going on between these two. They're married, they're allied. Uh, even though this is a logical expansion path for the Commonwealth, I guess the Commonwealth is just eyeing up greener pastures around here. Their only subject is Moldavia. They're subsidizing Ethiopia, which is quite strange. I guess they just want to be on good terms there. How good? I don't know. It's not like they're spreading the Copto love. This one is Coptic, but they don't appear to be uh, doing much with it. Just tuning in, says Sognar in the chat. Has the build been updated to include Coptic Ottoman nerf? I believe not. I don't think we switched to the newer build that we have, so they still get to enjoy... No, it looks like we have. Will of the Martyrs has been knocked down to 2.5% discipline. Yes, because that will truly be the nerf that uproots the Ottoman very scary empire. Oh yeah, and Krugi letting us all know, yes, the, the nerf is in. Seeing some laughs against the Commonwealth here. Look, the Commonwealth is number one in all stats. Emperor August. Did I have some mention of uh, August in the... In the agreement that everyone signed. Alright, welcome to 1600. Global trade has hit, and Portugal wants to uh, remind us all of that. If we check over on the tech screen and go over to our institutions, we can hit on global trade. And what a surprise, it originated in our worldwide merchant republic, Portugal. And it's specifically it spawned in Savela because Savela is worth uh, loads of money. Grab it while it's hot. It's uh, going to give Portugal that edge technologically, and from there it'll spread. Well, actually, since Portugal have their fingers in many pies, it's going to spread around the world really rather quickly. If we open that back up again, and we go to global trade here, there are lots of provinces that are getting global trade uh, very slowly, but I think, I'm trying to remember what it's based on, we could actually check out a province, just pick one at random and go, how is global trade growing here? Well, they have the printing press already, and they have a marketplace. So that's bo uh, boosting it up. But I know, for example, in Novgorod, it'll be growing there since it has a center of trade, and that's a real boost. If you have uh, centers of trade, that really helps how that all grows. So looking around the world here, institution pretty thick in Europe and spreading its way across. Ethiopia doing good for institutions as well. People are taking their sweet time hoovering up the delicious crunchy natives though. When it was a bit of competition over the land between Great Britain and uh, the Ottomans, they went for it like mad. But the Spanish are pretty lackluster. But our Spanish player is out of this for a wee bit. Maybe the AI is a little less uh, keen on declaring those wars. I don't know what he set his settings to. The Hungarians, the subject of the Austrians, deciding that the Commonwealth have to go, but the Commonwealth have their eyes on that, looking to reinforce it with their barely superior morale. Actually looking pretty bad for them. They are leaderless, they are the defender, and eh, not so hot. Of course then come the Bohemians. Well, bad news for Commonwealth on that siege, but really the bad news is uh, mostly for Austria. 
But Austria is curving back round. They're not keen to get out of this war just yet. They could tell Sweden to return some unlawful territory, but I don't think that's high in their uh, priority list at the moment. And they're enjoying lots of war exhaustion. They've probably been paying that down with their Diplo power. They did a good job fighting in Paris, though. Paris is taking its uh, very sweet time to be re-sieged by the British, who have brought artillery. Not plenty of it, but enough to get a three bonus there. And there we go, Paris is back. So Austria is really losing that uh, gain they had there. Now, I don't know what the discussion was between Austria and Commonwealth, because I would reiterate that if uh, Austria had suck peace with the Commonwealth, they could have turned around and slapped France and Britain. Either the uh, Austrians were too uptight to let go of the Bohemians, or the Commonwealth decided that they would not take peace, so they just wanted to crush Austria. I would love some input from either of our actors here, either Starnan in Austria or Marco over in Poland. But uh, it's their prerogative if they want to tell us now or if they want to wait till, uh, till the post-game blether, where we get to hear all the goings-on within their heads. I think our uh, Ottoman player is starting to regret signing that uh, contract that said, you know, peace, tranquility between our great nations, because now they're just chilling out. I really want to tip it over for our Makuria player. Doesn't call, doesn't sound right to call him the Makuria player. This is Bjorn the ex Lubin, and he'll be looking to grab his core over here, colonize Lega, and then make his way through Kakomja so that he can have Luba once again. That 8 development deserves to be his, but more so that 28 development iron deserves to be his. Good luck Bjorn, I know you have a small but dedicated fan base over on the plaza who want to see you make the most of it. I'm, I'm wondering if it's going to be a fetishist Luba that he restores, or a Copto Luba. He was going to be the one showing off the fetishist play that we have in the game, but uh, since he got knocked out, tragically knocked out, I haven't been able to really see that. Strong High, of course, is uh, Sunni, and they've been eradicating the fetishists in the area. Austria still looking for occupied in Burgundy, probably very much regretting their choice of action. Where to begin on that list of regrets? If we haven't had a look at how income is doing, though. Um, Great Britain number one, but only just barely. The Commonwealth is doing really good. The Commonwealth, by the end of this, could well be looking at number one in income, but probably not number one in score. Let's get a rundown on that, because it's good to remind people. Perhaps we have viewers here that haven't been around for uh, all these previous sessions. Let's grab a quick drink before I blether on about uh, nostalgia. So in these developer multiplayer sessions, we play for score. That is all that matters at the end of the day. Sure, sometimes we give our little subtasks, like Johan going, I will subsidize anybody that fights Jake. But by the time we hit the end of the campaign, what we look for is who has the greatest score. And looking at it right now, Ottomans are number one with France and then Ming. Commonwealth actually have a long way to go because their monthly gain is only the fourth. So they're not even in a position to be climbing their way to the top. Add to the fact that they have both their victory cards on the Ottomans and they will not get additional victory cards unless they grab these ones. The Ottomans are just doing fine and dandy because they have 3,000 points coming in from uh, their victory cards. So unless people really slap down the Ottomans, Commonwealth is not going to be rising up to the occasion. Even Venice is doing really well in the points regard, and they don't have any of their ones either. It's funny, though, to see the likes of Golden Horde, Mamluk... Oh, man, Golden Horde. They were doing so well for an AI. But, uh, no, they lost out, and they lost out big time. We have uh, Edo with saying, first time seeing the game at all. Well, this is Europa Universalis, truly grand strategy to the core. Take any nation from 1444 to 1820 and guide them as the Grey Eminence. And boy, are our nations being guided here. In the case of Austria, guided straight into the gutter. Now, uh, they should pay close attention to uh, Kern since they are erecting a new bastion there. 
If Commonwealth don't stroll in and take it, they'll be in for uh, a harder time to take it again. But do they even have enemies left to fight here? The Austrians continue to fight, and credit needs to be given here, because they keep fighting, even though the odds are not looking very good for them. They're still fighting with fewer than 100,000 on their side against the monstrosity of the French coalition by this point, which numbers about 300,000. The battle wages on, and even though they are... Uh, Treated as the attacker in the mountains, the French are reinforcing. The Commonwealth appear to be on their way. Perhaps not the greatest of moves unless they have more backup. Okay, it seems that they're uh, going for a do-or-die battle here if the Commonwealth are able to come in and reinforce. And uh, really reinforce this. Then I think the Austrians and friends will be sent packing. I don't know where they could go packing to. They do not have a lot of options here. This is going to be a very bloody battle for uh, both sides involved here. Probably more so for the French, since they are the ones that are being treated as the attacker in this mountain due to the fort being here. Alright, cannons on the front row from the Hungarian-Austrian side. That means they end. Cannons on the front row, they deal double damage, but they take double damage. So, not so hot for them. Kaboom! They are told where to go, and they are made to run far, far away. That's a shame for them. They still do have this fort. Maybe if uh, this fort had been taken, they wouldn't have had so far to run, but run away they go. And I think this will be it for Burgundy. They'll have nothing left that they could possibly say, since they'll be under full occupation with the loss of Savoy. At 77% siege progress on a mountainous fort, no wonder that they were going in with everything they could to uh, to defend it, since that would be a pain to re-siege. The siege has been going on for a year and a half now. This is really costing the Commonwealth, though. I'm sure they didn't go into this expecting to have to loan up and uh, spend a ton of their manpower that the Session refuses to help out with. We're being asked to see Austrian bank loans. The Austrians are not in debt. Again, either someone is bankrolling them, and uh, it wouldn't be Venice, because we can't see anything about sent gift here. Unless I'm really blind, but I'm not seeing it there. Or the Portuguese. Those are the two real bankrollers around here. I mean, yes, potentially the Ottomans. They have a lot of money. It wouldn't be the Commonwealth. They're at war, so that won't be happening. And then the, the Spaniards? Who's to say? We're also being asked about Stronghai's war. They're at war again. Again, fighting Mali. And again, maybe taking stuff? They took a grand total of one province last time, so it's slow going for Stronghai. Not really living up to their name. Trintragula also enjoying a bit of warfare. Their Malwa has not exploded in growth, and they enjoy alliances with Bengal, Nepal, and Sindh, but not Gujarat. Gujarat is their rival, and a very scary rival to have since they have military tech 15, and Malwa has been very much not concentrating on mil tech. It seems to me, seems to me that they're just being terrible at uh, mil tech. They are focusing on it, and they do have a plus two advisor in it. They're doing all the right steps. Mm -hmm. Their malevolence probably won't touch on anything here, but they'll be happy to be Midas touched an architectural visionary heir on the way. Get their additional uh, personality soon enough. Don't know what he's going with this, because Pasai is uh, expanding in this area as well. Siak allied with Pasai. Don't know why they don't just gobble them up, but uh, to each their own. Austria, though. I think it's time to tap out, buddy. I don't know where you think you'll be getting back up from. So Burgundy is out. Burgundy is down and out. Did they lose anything? <laughs> They've been losing things left and right, so it's hard for me to even tell if they did here. But I uh, know, of course, they had Savoy and Charley. Charley? Uh, shouldn't be doing French. We should get our French programmer down here to actually help out with uh, some of these words here. Austria's taking corrupted money, it seems. Yeah, they do have some corruption, so that could well be what's going down there. They're ahead in tech, and they're rooting out corruption, so corruption is going down. 
Morocco has uh, embraced the Copto ways, no doubt under the influence of the Ottomans and Ethiopia. They're looking to pretty much unite the continents under one Coptic banner. Although you can, you can have whatever shade you want over here in the New World: Coptic, Catholic, Animist, Sunni, yeah, Reformed, Protestant, you name it, Totemism. All right, so the peace deals are coming in from France. Austria will release Genoa as a sovereign state. I know who won't be happy with peace deals like this. Just Genoa. So Commonwealth jumped in on this. I would be surprised if they didn't want anything. It's not like they have aggressive expansion that they have to worry about. But they are also letting rebels just take over. So I don't know what's going on with this. Austria has an almost untappable source of prestige. So it's very hard to uh, to make them have their subjects rise up against them. Maybe if we tapped over to Austria here, and there's no such thing as liberty desire. He's even supporting loyalists in his subjects to keep them completely in line. That vast amount of dip rep helps as well. But with this, the Austrians are going to find themselves very occupied. Würzburg, Hungary... Bohemia, they're getting involved, but uh, I'm pretty proud of Moldavia here, who has been marching through and uh, doing their best. They'd be doing their better if they actually went and uh, gone for that fort there. And they even desire this province, so I think they're taking it in their own name. That's pretty cute. But I'm not seeing what Austria can do from here on out.